With the GoCurrency.com sports ticker, I'm Greg Sharp. The Husker football team will return to action this Saturday as they host Indiana for homecoming. The Big Red enjoyed their first bye week this past weekend. Interim head coach Mickey Joseph will hold his weekly press conference tomorrow. Husker volleyball started the conference season with back-to-back wins over Michigan State and Ohio State. The Buckeyes match was a dandy with Nebraska winning in five sets. The latest AVCA poll has come out. Husker State at number three. Texas is number one. Out of the Big Ten, Purdue is five. Ohio State six. Minnesota seven. Wisconsin eight. And Penn State checks in at number 12. The Huskers are back in action on Friday at Rutgers. Monday Night Football tonight has the Giants hosting the Cowboys in an NFC East matchup. Georgia Tech fired their football coach and athletic director today. A.D. Todd Stansberry, football coach Jeff Collins were both relieved of their duty. Collins was in his fourth year as the coach. The Yellow Jackets have lost nine straight games to FBS opponents. A light schedule in Major League Baseball, all of the action under the lights. And our update presented by Currency. Does your business need help financing big ticket items like equipment, trucks, and trailers? Currency is here to help. Visit GoCurrency.com for details. Now get ready. Sports Highly coming up here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Snap back. Thompson has it. Now dancing with his feet, rolling out, looking for a man downfield. Going to take off and try to run with it. Now he scrambles back the other way. Looking, steps, throws downfield. Has Isaiah Garcia Castaneda. Makes a catch. 45 of Northwestern to the 40. Weaves his way to the 35, 30, 25, 20. Up to the bounds. My goodness, what a play. Casey Thompson. Side set. Lindsey Krause, kaboom. 8-7, Nebraska set two after winning the first 5-2. Snap back. They give it off to Grant right side. He is in. Touchdown, Nebraska. And the Huskers have the lead back here in Ireland. Pepperdine volleyball. Bumped over to the left. Aaron swings. Stop. Match point, Big Red. Keelan on. Kennedy on. 25-22. Nebraska wins it in three. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are. We're back after a bye week. How about that? No Husker football over the weekend. Hope everybody enjoyed themselves for the last couple of days. But we're back, ready for another game week. Huskers homecoming week. It's going to be fun on campus. A lot of activities. They're going to be building floats out in front of some of the Greek houses during the week. They've got a big corn stock festival that will be out in front of uh, the east side of the stadium on Friday. That's always a lot of fun that will be going on out there. So looking forward to some fun times on campus as Nebraska gets set to host Indiana Hoosiers will be here. Huskers have not played the Hoosiers much since joining the Big Ten Conference, but they will match up Saturday night at 640, the official kick time for that game. So looking forward to getting back into kind of press conference mode this week. The Huskers did, Jessica, release their updated game notes and a couple of tweaks to the to the two deep. Yes, saw that. And Jeremiah Searles coming up a little bit later. We dive into the, the changes on the offensive line. Chris Klarvik back inside, which... You know, that was kind of needed with the depth issues once Henrich Henrich went out. You know, if that ever happens again, hopefully not. But if Luke or Nick ever go down again, you want to have, you know, those people in place and be ready so you don't have to, you know, be making midweek changes again. So, uh, yeah, and the other one was, was... Well, Gabe well, Irvin was... Omar Brown is showing up oh, yeah. at, at the Omar nickel Brown. spot, uh, backing up Isaac Gifford. Omar had not been on a depth chart really all season long for this team, but there he is popping up there. And also Phelan Sanford showing up as a two at the safety spot behind Buford. We haven't seen Phelan's name on a depth chart. I'm not surprised Omar Brown is moving to the nickel spot. He's a guy that we've heard from a lot of people, and he's even said it, probably the most versatile defensive back that... Um, is in that room and so worked both at corner and safety and he told me that this summer right when he got here I want to be able to play whatever position is needed and I want to be able to show that I can and so I think he embraces that and will you know be able to step in wherever is needed and yeah I mean we'll see how what what personnel is on the field and and changes that are made in game but Mickey has said that from the start is that you know he you know could potentially make some changes and, and put some bodies in places that haven't we haven't seen much of. Can't wait for the coach to talk tomorrow. He'll get asked about, I'm sure he'll get asked about some of these tweaks 
to the uh, depth chart for the Huskers as they get ready for a night game, the last scheduled home night game of the year. They could still, you could still have another one added late in the season, but kind of have the feeling this will be the last night game. Love night games. Weather's supposed to be fantastic for Saturday. Also, some terrific volleyball matches. How about the five Saturday Saturday night? Wasn't that great? That was awesome. So, I had Big Ten Plus, but something happened with my subscription. I have no idea. I was subscribed to Illinois, then I couldn't get it fixed, and so I just listened to it. And so normally I have done that before where I've listened and watched, but that was the first time that I was just listening to it. It was fascinating. Uh, You could just feel, I mean, Lauren and JB obviously do such a good job, but they did, you know, you could feel the energy and you hearing coach cook talking about the fans afterwards, it came across on the radio broadcast. A lot of times you don't see it um, on the radio, but you could, you could absolutely hear it and feel it through the broadcast. So yeah, it was awesome. Great match. Top 10 matchup. Huskers were number three. Ohio State was number seven. Ohio State actually went up a spot. As I just told you in the ticker, after losing that five set match, they were in control of the match because they won two of the first three sets. The Huskers has to win, had to win four and five to survive that one. And we're going to have a lot more of those type of matches, I think, in Big Ten play. We will hear from the coach and daughter Lauren with the latest edition of Kicking Back with the Cooks, which just came out. Uh, if you get your podcast, we'll play you a snippet of that coming up in hour number two. But great atmosphere at the Devaney Center for that. And they're gone for a while. They, they have the next two weekends away from home, so you won't see the Oscars back on the volleyball court for a couple of weeks. But just a terrific match, terrific drama out there. Uh, the place was rocking. It was really alive and a great way to spend a Saturday night watching that high caliber of volleyball. It was really good. Yeah, and good for this team to have to battle through that adversity. You know, they had seen with Creighton where they won the two and then Creighton comes back. But now you have, again, these different types of adversity for a young team that's playing a lot of young players Mm -hmm. and moving some people around with some injuries to have that experience will be good to have in the back back pocket. Allie Batenhorst was yes. playing just a little bit. Didn't play a lot the other night, but she did play a little bit. Nicklin's still not in uniform, still a nursing an injury, that's, so she's not back yet. But it was great to see Allie Batenhorst get a little bit of time. And playing not on the side that she normally plays on, right? right. That I heard Lauren uh, talking yep. about that, that she came in and looked comfortable on. Uh, how many how many kabooms did JB have? Quite a few? Uh, yeah. A lot of kabooms. Yes. I wonder if he's ca- call the grandkids. Did that come out, Andrew? Yes, it was. It was yeah, at the, the end. Grandkids. Yep. Yeah, okay. Call so the grandkids. He got them all in there the other night. I figured he probably did as as exciting as that was for the Huskers. So we've got Jeremiah, part of his podcast, coming up here in just a little bit. And then hour two, part of the latest Kicking Back with the Cooks with John and Lauren. John's uh, uh, month weekly volleyball show will be tomorrow night, hour number two. And a programming note for all of you, our monthly sit-down with Athletic Director Trev Alberts tomorrow night in hour number one. So a busy night on the network uh, coming up tomorrow night with back-to-back hour shows with Trev first and then John Cook in hour number two. A lot of great football, too, over the weekend. I watched a lot. Did you get to watch a lot of college football? I did. I watched all day on Saturday, flip back and forth. Um, it was nice. It was good to sit back. and Because, you know, when you're on a game day here, and you can always go back and watch it, but it's just so different when it you is. watch it live and you haven't, you don't know anything that's, because, you, you, I mean, on social media, nothing, if you're on social media, you can't stay away from anything. And so it's just different going back and, and watching it as opposed to watching it unfold in in real time and so yeah i got to watch taking a lot of football so little, it was fun. jealous of andrew he went down and watched ku and duke play Lawrence. he didn't make it down there too early andrew for him. too early for him is that little... we don't do weekend losers right but uh, it'd be it <laughs> 11 o'clock kick probably got him he couldn't get out of bed <laughs> how was the apple place was great applejack festival in nebraska city <laughs> was fantastic picked the whole bag of apples is it all? Are they all red apples? They have all kinds of brands. You can get Fuji, or I mean, there's a bunch of different types of apples. So they had them all. So what you are you going to do with all those apples? Oh, eat some of them. I'm kind of hoping there's a pie coming my way at some point in time. Yeah. Hope that's happening. But yeah, beautiful weather. Some guy goes, ah, taking advantage of your off week. I'm be yep over here. So pick it. It was very nice weather. Great. Weather. It was good weather today too. It was beautiful. It's gonna be great all week. Yes. Fantastic. All right. 402-413-2400. That's the number if you want to be a part of the program with a comment or question. Let's start first with Jim out in North Platte. Good evening, Jim. Welcome to the program. Yes. Good evening to you both. I like to ask you, a, you and Jessica a question and I would like to ask a regular question my question is i hope you and greg and you jessica go to a bible believing church like tom osborne is here's my question 
I know Osborne was a firm believer, and I don't know about Bo Pelini, and, and I don't know about Frank Solich, and I don't know about Riley, and I don't know about Scott Frost. Here is my question. It, it, even my question is, if, if you're home, I have noticed that basically Mickey Joseph is going to call the players in on Sunday. Here's my question. If those kids and John Cook's girls want to go to church, I I think that they should give be given the uh, possibility of going to church in the morning. Then they do their afternoon for cup. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah, I don't I don't know the answer to that. I do know that in the Husker football team in the past has had a Bible study or a chapel service when they've been on the road before a game. So I do know that has been offered up to them. I don't travel with volleyball, so I don't know about their routine. Yeah, I don't I either. Don't I do know too that, you know, again, with all the changes and, and up, uh, updates and technology, there are a lot of different options of when to take in a church service. Exactly I mean, right. you can watch it online yep. at night, go Saturday night. There's a lot of different um, times that you can go that's suitable for your schedule these days. So, and you know, I know a lot of, these players, that's important to them. So I, I know that they find the time when they can. And, and um, it's not always a traditional like Sunday morning, like, you know, what people might be used to. Right. But there are definitely different ways that you can go hear a sermon or, or take in a Bible study, whatever that might be. And I, I, I think you're right. I, I do think there's a group of players that have their own Bible study. All right, Jim, appreciate the phone call, 402-413-2400. That's the number to dot us up with a comment or question, or if you want to, you can fire off a text. Also time to tell you to buckle up, put the phone down, a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Back with more of the show, including Jeremiah Searles, a snippet of his latest podcast. That's coming up next. Do you want your date to wait for your interlock device to let you drive? your kids to ask why you have an ankle bracelet, or your boss to see your criminal history? Do you want to miss important life events because of house arrest? Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Preparation is the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, 
ice cold beverages to wash them down and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With a proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Back by popular demand. Hy-Vee drive through flu shot clinics. Just follow the signs in your Hy-Vee parking lot to get your flu shot right from your car. It's easy, convenient, and no appointment or prescription is necessary. drive through flu shots are offered on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 7 p.m. Or get your flu shot inside your Hy-Vee pharmacy at any time with no appointment necessary. Plus, when you get your flu shot at Hy-Vee, you get a 20-cent Hy-Vee fuel saver. Some restrictions apply. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. It's a Monday edition of Sports On. I'm so glad you're with us here tonight. So glad to be back with you on a game week as the Huskers will be back on the field Saturday night against the Indiana Hoosiers. Let's head to, head to the phone. Let's go to Ogallala. Robert, you're up next. Good evening. Yes, sir. First of all, I listened to that volleyball game the other night, and I was like listening to a championship game. <laughs> so they, good for you. I mean, it, it was a good game. But second of all, when you have that football coach in there, ask him if he's got the backbone to throw back in the power eye to make what made Nebraska, Nebraska. <laughs> All right, Robert, uh, I don't know when we get Coach Joseph again. I don't think it's going to be this Thursday. We have a different assistant coach. But, you know, Mickey played some in that era where Coach Osborne ran a lot of option, you know, and so I think, you know, Mickey certainly understands the option game quite a bit. I don't know that Mickey – really that power eye was more of the late 80s, early – or late 70s, early 80s with guys like I Am Hip and – uh, obviously, Mike Rozier was great with that. Roger Craig blocking for him, but yeah, uh, well, I think you can. I think we might see a little option. I, I certainly think that's something Mickey 
likes to be able to do. I do think, though, you got to do the offense that works best with your personnel that you have. And they got a lot of really good wide receivers that um, and a, a quarterback that can throw it. And so, yeah, does it help to have a quarterback that can run and, and to hand the ball off and, and run the ball? Absolutely. It's, it's all about balance. But I also think you don't get away from what this football team has been built to do, and that's throw the football. Absolutely. Let's go to Ed in Lincoln. Good evening, Ed. You're on Sports Nightly. Yeah, uh, I go back. I'm almost 80. And I go back to when they brought in Pitten Guy Jr. and he brought in Cabani. And uh, I remember barely uh, 5,000 people at the stadium. So I've seen the good, bad, and whatever you want to call it. But I guess one of the things, talking to some of the old timers that are, you know, average age about between 73 and 80, is that they're hoping that the athletic director will give some reduction in ticket prices next year to the people because it's really tough to give your tickets away when nobody even wants them uh, the last two years and pay this high premium. You know, we're not just getting our tickets for what uh, the, the price on the ticket is. It's, you know, you, you can take that times eight or nine when you add them together to what you're paying for the tickets. I just wondered what you thought of that. Ed, appreciate it. No, I, I, hey, I think Trev would certainly listen to that. I think that they're mulling over a lot of those type of things about what to do with seat licensing. And I, I know he does not want to attach a seat license to every seat in the stadium. I know he does not want to go down that path moving forward, but um, I'll see if I can work that in tomorrow night. Trev I was going to say he'll be on the show tomorrow, so call yeah. back in and ask him yourself. Try to get him on there. Here tonight, though, or earlier today, you caught up with Jeremiah for his weekly podcast. Yep, so we will be dropping the latest edition of the Sideline Slice. It's lengthy, as always, so this is just a portion of it. And he got back from a hunting trip, didn't get an elk, but someone in his group did, and they got a bear. They shot a bear and an elk and all that. So that part of the, that's not on this, uh, but here is the portion of the latest edition of the Sideline Slice. Most of the time, I know players don't like to have a bye week coming off a loss, but I think the bye week came at a very much needed time for this program. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone needed a breath of fresh air. I mean, from the fans to Mickey Joseph as the new head coach to the players. I mean, there was just so much being built up and going on here over the last four weeks that everyone needed a fresh reset, you know? And so this was a really good time for that all to come in have one to be able to refocus and also it gave Mickey Joseph and, and staff time to kind of reset the structure of maybe how they want to do things right you talk about hey new head coach maybe that's a new practice schedule maybe that's a new way that the scripts are put together or you know just a bunch of different things it gave them a couple of weeks to really get on top of that so that when the kids showed back up this week ready to roll everything isn't just kind of all over the place that hopefully they have a nice structured plan put together so being that you don't make a lot of significant fixes and changes in a week and a bye week but what do you think this team I know you never went through this but what do you think this team wanted to accomplish over the last week and then this week heading into Indiana you know I think the number one thing that this team looked at was not necessarily on the field but more of off the field of playing for a little bit more of freedom you know I think that everyone felt the looming weight of man, if I don't play well, maybe Coach Frost is going to get fired. Or if we're not doing things well, my head coach might not have a job. You know, So there's all these like outlying things that could have put pressure on players that I think now they're hopefully going to be able to play a little bit more free, right? Like, hey, that's moved on. We moved on from that. Let's just go out there and let's just play. Let's just do our thing. And so I hope to see a little bit more lax in that regard, maybe not so much fear of failure because something bad might happen and just be able to go out and just play free. Um, but the other thing is on the defensive side of the ball, we got to find a way to get to the quarterback. You know, I watched so much college football this weekend, and the teams that were having wild success were the teams that were pressuring the quarterback. And the same thing in the NFL. I mean, look at what the Dolphins did to the Bills, right? How do you stop the Bills? Well, you get to Josh Allen's feet, and they did it a lot. And that's one thing we just have not done is be able to get to the quarterback and affect his throwing. So that's the thing on defense. And then on offense, protect the quarterback. <laughs> You know, I, it, it goes back and forth. You've got to be able to protect a guy. Casey Thompson is getting beat up back there, and he's not going to be able to survive an entire season taking hits the way he has the last couple of weeks, especially against Oklahoma. I mean, he got beat up pretty good. So protecting the quarterback, getting to the quarterback, are where I would start if I was the head coach of this football team because 
if you can't do either one of those, you're not going to have give yourself a good chance to win a lot of football games. Well, you had just talked about protecting the quarterback and a new depth chart was released. Of course, you know, we had talked about it going into the Oklahoma game. I had said I did a report on Teddy Prohaska that he had gone into the medical tent, didn't come back and play the rest of the Georgia Southern game. He had on a, a sling on his arm. He came back out not not in uniform, so they had moved. Turner Corcoran over to left tackle. Kevin Williams started the game at left guard, but now on the depth chart released today, Ethan Piper is uh, listed as the number one guy there at left guard. So I guess just that movement on the line, which we had talked about could potentially be an issue for this team. Um, what? How do you attack that and getting guys feeling good in these spots moving around like, like they're doing right now? Yeah, it's not easy by any means. And we talked about it during fall camp, like this depth on this O-line was already really thin, you know, so moving Turner out to left tackle is a tough ask for him because you've been practicing at guard the whole time who actually played tackle last year. So he's been switching out. It's kind of like a, well, we know you could do it, so go do it. And so that's a lot to ask of him. I expect him to struggle a little bit more before he excels, just settling his feet back in. Ethan Piper's got a lot of playing experience. He started a few games last year. I think he's been working more at center. So a little bit of a transition to guard. I thought Kevin Williams played pretty well in the Georgia Southern game when he came in and played left tackle. So I'd personally like to see a little bit more of him. You know, um, Henry Lutovsky's a guy too, who's been playing well, but you just, it's gonna be a little bit of rotation, I think. I think we're gonna be trying to figure out who fits in to plug this, not necessarily the most talented five, but the best five. And I think they're still trying to figure that out. The bye week hopefully helped with that. You know, if Ethan Piper came out, had a great bye week practice, he earned that starting spot. But unless someone grabbed that thing by the horns and took the starting left guard spot, I think you might see some rotation in there until someone really runs away with it. All right. Well, again, uh, also on the injury front, A.J. Allen done for the season. Our guy, we, we have been talking mm -hmm. about him all throughout fall camp. We saw just some great flashes from him throughout these first four games. But he is uh, done for the season, but is going to get to red shirt because he just played in those four games. And so Gabe Irvin came into the game against Oklahoma, did some nice things. And we saw some uh, good things from him last year. I just think, you know, it just takes a while to get back into completely being in game shape coming off an ACL. So um, I guess uh, thoughts on replacing A.J. Allen. I mean, that was a deep running back room that we've been talking about as well, uh, dating back even to the spring with Anthony Grant and being added A.J. Allen. And now uh, Gabe Irvin looks to probably be the guy that's going to be filling in that A.J. role. You know, that's that's the nice thing about having a room that's got a lot of depth. You know, it's you never one's going to complain about having too much depth. And we can have a lot of people that were contributors. That's very helpful. First of all, I'm extremely thankful he gets a red shirt. Mm -hmm. That's a huge win for Nebraska. You know, if we would have, it happened to Teddy Prohaska last year where we burned his shirt by one game and then he loses that entire year. So he's going to gain that year back with a medical red shirt, most likely this year. Um, you know, but having AJ Allen be able to red shirts a blessing in disguise. I know we wanted him to play this year, but having him be able to sit and get healthy is huge. But I'm excited to see what Gabe Irving can do. You know, he's a guy that last year flashed a lot. But again, the injury. So how does he come back? I think sometimes all guys need is an opportunity to just really get back out there. So I think Gabe Irvin's going to have that opportunity with Grant and try and get this running game going and try and rely a little bit more on this running game so that the issue of protecting the passer with new offensive linemen doesn't rear its ugly head as much if you can just grind it out on the ground. So Keith Mann had this in his game notes. Trey Palmer has uh, 28 receptions through four games and had his first touchdown against Oklahoma. And 28 catches is the most ever by a Nebraska player through four games. And we've been talking about him, and he certainly had some big catches. But I still don't think he's really been um, – had a – huge breakout game yet and so you, you look at those numbers and some of the things he's been able to do and I don't even think we've seen e anywhere close to the best of Trey Palmer yet yeah you know you see the you see the opportunities that he has and you see the potential really and what he can be and so that's a guy that you just have to keep plugging you know eventually he's going to blow the top off a of defense and I think the thing that has impressed me a little bit is his ability for the the yards after catch you know, he hasn't had really the opportunity, and I think that's what you're alluding to, to really get the ball on a slant and take it to the house. You know, he has that type of speed and that type of explosive, explosiveness. So I'd like to see more short passing game to him and let him really run with the ball in his hands. And uh, another guy I'd like to see some more get going is Omar Manning. You know, that's another guy that 
a lot has been said about him through his career here, good, bad, and ugly, but he's a guy that we really need to get going. You know, a big-bodied receiver like that that can go over the middle, make contested catches, 50-50 balls. That's a guy that I'd be looking to to see if he can step up a little bit as well. What other things as, a, you know, for an offensive line that, you know, lost your starting left tackle, moving things around, what are some other things that can be done to help out that offensive line as they work through some things? You know, the, the, the keeping the passing game on rhythm is really important. Um, keeping Casey Thompson, those receivers on the short passing game and keeping them on, on pace is important. But, you know, the biggest thing is just if you can control the run game, it slows down the pass rush. You know, when you get back there and you throw the ball 60, 65 times a game, these, that's what these DNs want. That's what these DNs live for. They love for the sack and the sack dances and the pound my chest and show my grill and do all that fun stuff. They don't love when the offensive tackle and guard double team them for 40 times a game and push them back and push them back and body blow and body blow and body blow. And then also now it's time to pass rush. They're a little bit more beat up. There's a little less air in that, you know, a little less gas in the tank. So I think that as a young offensive line and with new guys, you want to really rely on the run game to really try and take some pressure off the pass game. But that requires getting a lead. So it, it's catch-22. You know, there's really no way to hide. You can't hide out there. If you're a young offensive lineman or you're in a new spot, I mean, it's league play, baby. There, there is no more hiding. It's time to get after it. You know, you just said this, and you talked about this before, about as a defense, it's not necessarily what you want to hear. Like, oh, we just got to go out, score everybody. So what do you want to see? What, uh, I guess, can be done by this Nebraska defense against this Indiana offense? You know, they're going to throw the ball over the yard. So I think that we've played a lot of shell coverage, a little softer coverage than I'd like to see over these last few weeks. And I don't know if that was a combination of Chenander not feeling comfortable getting to the quarterback, so he's having to send blitzes, which then requires us to play a little softer in zone, or, you know, if that was just kind of the play call. But I would like to see these DBs get up in these receivers' faces and challenge them. You know, I want to see a little bit more challenge on the line of scrimmage, a little jam, a little man coverage. Put some of these guys on islands and say, hey, Tommy Hill, go earn that. You know, hey, Quentin Newsom, go after there and get in these guys' faces and get after them. And then when you play tight coverage, maybe it makes the quarterback hold that ball for just another half a second so he's not in rhythm. And then maybe Garrett Nelson and Caleb Tanner and those guys can actually get to the quarterback if it's not just ball in, ball out, ball in, ball out, which is what we've seen a lot of teams do with the quick passing game against us. So... I'd like to see some tighter coverage on the front, on the back end, and then maybe that allows just that half second longer needed to get those rushers to the quarterback. Okay, so your three big keys for Nebraska to win this one against Indiana. You know, the first one is just no turnovers. You know, I think that we can't turn the football over. When you're a football team that's kind of trying to find a way to stop the bleeding, right? I mean, right now we're just bleeding everywhere right now. The number one thing you got to do is take care of the football. So take care of the football on offense. Don't give Indiana any short fields. Don't let them steal any possessions and go down there. You just take care of the football. It's okay to punt. It's okay to punt and flip the field. You know, get one or two first downs and flip the field is so much better than trying to force something on a third and seven or a third and eight and throwing a bad pick or just ball security is super important. You know, the second thing is establishing a run. You know, I think establishing the, the run with Grant and those and Irvin and those guys early in the football game to try and, like you said, control some of the clock is going to be really important. And then on defense, I think the big thing is get sacks. You know, we've talked about it all episode, but these are really important things that if you watch college football around, these are what people are winning football teams are doing. They're taking the ball away, they're establishing a run, and they're sacking the opponent's quarterback. Like, those are – that's a really good recipe to win football games. So – you know, I loved that we have kind of limited our penalties. We've limited some of that stuff. Now it's just trying to put it all together. So if we can do those three things, we give ourselves a really good chance against an Indiana team that's not very good. They're struggling as much as we are. So, But this is a team that if you let them get rolling and scoring points, then they get the confidence and they will just throw the ball over the yard if they can. So, again, that was just a portion of the full episode of the Sideline Slice with Searles, which we will be putting out first thing in the morning so you can watch and listen wherever you watch or listen to your podcast. So well, Valentino's, um, right? Yes, Valentino's, the official pizza of the Huskers. And that we always talk. We have a lengthy conversation every week, so that was just a small portion of it. So if you want to hear all of his hunting adventures, too, don't want to miss that. You know, that's on this week's episode, too. Pretty appropriate, Jeremiah's podcast sponsored by a food outlet, right? Pizza too, right? <laughs> hey, and um, I'm told that the next recording, we're going to try to get Val's in studio. So they'll be bringing Come us some on. pizza. So we might be getting back-to-back weeks weeks of Val's uh, or back-to-back days of 
vows next week. How about that? Jeremiah's living the dream. <laughs> Good stuff right there. All right, phone line's back open for you, 402-413-2400. If you want to be a part of the program with a call or a text, that is our Sports Sunday Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way for one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. More of the show coming up next. The Ford truck lineup is purpose-built from the ground up, designed to be tough and productive, crafted with high-strength, military-grade aluminum alloy body and torture-tested high-strength steel frame with new tech to help you work smart and hard. The F-150, Ranger, and Maverick are built tough and ready to tackle whatever lies ahead. Hit the road in confidence and learn more about Ford trucks in-store or online anytime at WoodhouseFord.com, your trusted truck dealer since 1975. Woodhouse Ford. Grant gets a handoff, Stutter steps his way to the 15, cuts to the outside, wow, 10, 5, touchdown, Anthony Grant, an electrifying move at the 19-yard line, and he scoops in there for six points. Tomorrow, from 6 to 7 p.m., we will be hosting the Athletic Director Show with Trev Alberts. In hour number two, from 7 to 8, we'll be hosting the Volleyball Show with John Cook. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or on the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Nebraska Innovation Campus creates partnerships between business and the University of Nebraska. Partners lease office space, laboratories, pilot plants, and greenhouses, all centrally located with easy access to University of Nebraska talent and resources. Nebraska Innovation Campus, creating spaces and culture that inspire. Learn more at innovate.unl.edu. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. At Sedilla and Chevrolet, we help you find vehicles designed with purpose and function, prioritizing safety, technology, and the dependability you need. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo to shop in stock and inbound inventory, or to order your new vehicle. And as your Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium duty trucks and low cab forwards. Visit SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us. Dylan. Chevy, find new roads. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY 2000 through 2021 sales. Hey, Husker fans, it's time to gear up for the season. So let's do it right. Jerseys, hats, hoodies, and more. Shields has everything you need to show your Nebraska pride. Visit our fan shop online or in-store for the biggest and best brands in the game. You'll find the right gear to level up your team spirit with all the essentials for your pregame parking lot party. Shields, proud partner of Husker Athletics and football fans everywhere. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. 
Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBeefeed.com. Triple Beef Feed, helping you and your cattle. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org. huskers Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. Focus and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. See Shelter Agent Jeb Brandt in Hastings, DJ Robertson in Aurora, or Callie Schilke in Imperial. Buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Unless you're using your phone to text or call us, 402 413 2400, the number to be a part of the program here on a Monday night. Back in the game week for the Oscars press conference tomorrow with Mickey Joseph, some players. Also, John Cook will have his weekly press conference and Amy Williams, Fred Hoiberg, going to be there because basketball practice starts this week. How about that? We're not even in October, practice is starting. And well, and they've been practicing too, because again, right. they practice year round. But yeah, full full go and opening night coming up this weekend with SDG, and so I'm excited for that as well. All right? Yeah, Andrew's got his uh, tickets ready to roll and, and looking to get after it as well. Oh no, he's got his press pass. He's trying to figure out how to get down yeah. there and yeah, you know, is he going to get like he's working? Is he going to get an autograph and stuff while he's over there? You never know with Andrew. You never know. Art in Los Angeles says, "Greg, please talk a little bit about Adrian Martinez. Very happy for him and." Um, great that he beat Oklahoma played really well and I you know I was talking to some people that were out of some places in Lincoln Saturday night and they said a lot of cheering for Adrian when he did a great job Adrian's a great kid I'm, I'm glad he had some success on Saturday yeah I mean I think there's no doubt about it Husker fans really appreciate what he did for Nebraska for four years and of course last year he battled through a lot of injuries and so and he's so nice like such a nice guy was so well liked did a lot for the community so yeah I mean I think Again, was it a change needed? I think for both parties, absolutely. I mean, Adrian and, and here, but I think for the most part, fans and, and everyone around here really appreciates what he did here for four years. And I called that. I told, you can ask multiple people, we can call him up right now. I said, Adrian is going to have a day. And I think, I think Kansas State knocks off Oklahoma because they just have had problems with running quarterbacks. And as much as Brent Vittables is a defensive guy, it's still the same players on that field that have had right. trouble tackling a running quarterback for years. And Adrian went down there and had a big game a year ago. And so, uh, yeah, glad for him. And also, um, maybe he was also thinking he's – I know he still keeps in contact with a lot of the players on this team. Maybe he wanted to go down there and also hand Oklahoma one for what <laughs> Oklahoma did last sure. week to Nebraska. You know, and, and, and Adrian – can make plays we saw him make plays here the mistakes that you know ruined his Husker career in a lot of ways he avoided those Saturday night he was not he didn't throw an interception didn't fumble the football so good for him and good made, young man. made the throws on target when he they did. needed to happen you know sometimes he didn't see him always complete passes when you know you needed it the most and he made some big time throws uh, in some big time moments when and boy that run to seal it at the end third and on 16. third yeah third and 16 wow that was impressive big time play all right let's uh, go to Arlington Gary you are up next here on Sports Nightly taking my call you bet uh, quick question for you um, what well, was wondering what the uh, status of Ramir Johnson is well, he was hurt. He hurt, or he was hurt for the Oklahoma game. So I don't, I don't know if he's going to be back this week or not. Maybe we'll get an update on him from Coach Joseph tomorrow. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, you bet. Yeah, he I don't, was he in uniform even? Yeah, he, he was hurt during the game. Okay. So that was one of the reports. It, I I think he again. I don't know, but it looked like he might have pulled something. He was trying to go, and could just couldn't. Kind of like with what happened with Travis Volk, like like was running up and down trying to see if he could, you know, go, and, and he just, he 
just shook his head and I just don't think he felt like yeah. he could he could go and so um hopefully it was just something that was pulled or tweaked and over the bye week was able to get some rehab in and and we'll be back I think you will definitely see more Gabe Urban this week with AJ Allen done for the season unfortunately with his injury uh so you've got Anthony Grant and then and then Gabe and then maybe Ramirez might be your third guy although Jock Gantz probably wants to get some carries too yeah uh, I, I mean again I think that's the good thing about having depth in that room and coach Applewhite talked about that and you need more than one running back and you need more than two running backs and so luckily that's a room that they had built some depth in and have some guys that have played some really valuable minutes and I think it you know as Gabe gets going a little bit more and into a rhythm watch out because we saw some flashes from him and so the more that he can maybe get in a rhythm the more he can maybe step into that role because it was becoming quite the one-two punch with uh, Grant and Allen it was Gabe looked good. Gabe looked like the better back against Oklahoma for Nebraska. So maybe he can carry that in into this week. 402-413-2400, the number to be a part of the program. Time to tell you that our Sports Honey Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Back with our final segment of Hour 1 next. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset, day by day. Donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Husker fans, join us in celebrating excellence in women's athletics. Meet student athletes and alumni from every Nebraska women's program and commemorate the 50th anniversary of Title IX at the More Is Possible Rally on Saturday, October 8th at Bolin Stadium. This event will begin at 10.30 a.m. and is free for all ages. Register today at huskers.com slash Title IX. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series. Drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network broadcast center, it is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cooney with you here on a Monday night, 402-413-2400, the number to be part of the program tonight. 
Uh, Monday Night Football in about 20 minutes. They're doing the Manning cast again tonight, Eli and Peyton. Peyton is wearing a shirt that says <laughs> Chad Powers. It's because Eli went incognito t- to try out as a walk-on at Penn State, and they filmed him going in there. He had a big wig on and stuff. And uh, if you haven't seen that, go find that. It's pretty it good. It was hilarious. Who would have thought Eli? I mean, you know, we've seen Peyton do some funny things, right. and he's shown his personality, but I didn't know Eli had that that in him. Pretty good, wasn't it? We should try to set that up where Andrew goes to a walk-on tryout. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, let's work on that for, for Andrew to... I mean, he claims to be maybe like a baseball. Maybe we can line that up with Coach Bowl. Yeah, or golf. He says he's a great golfer. So we'll, we'll see, see how that goes. <laughs> hey, Husker Athletics offering a Big Ten mini plan. $200 will get you a ticket to the four remaining home games, all conference games, Indiana Saturday night, Illinois at the end of the month of October, and then two November games, Minnesota and Wisconsin. If you have an interest in that, go visit huskers.com slash tickets. So $200, $50 a ticket, pretty good value for Big Ten conference games starting this Saturday night with Indiana coming to town. I did watch a little bit of Indiana and Cincinnati. Cincinnati's not bad. They picked them apart. You think uh, Huskers can put some points on the board Saturday? I do. I watched quite a bit of that game, and I immediately thought that Nebraska's wide receivers will have a could potentially have a really big day. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, and again, I think it's that mentality that Mickey Joseph instills in those wide receivers that even, you know, even against Oklahoma's secondary that – you, they can match up with anybody, and they have that mentality of, hey, one-on-one matchups, the ball is ours. And I just, I think that, uh, you know, the way that teams have thrown the ball, I mean, even Western Kentucky put over 300 yards passing on uh, the Indiana secondary. So, um, yeah, I think it potentially could be a big day for the uh, wide receivers and company. Hope so. Indiana took it on the chin by 21 points to the Bearcats, their first loss of the year. They had a narrow victory in week one over Illinois in a game that the Illini kind of blew. I think Illini, Illinois fans would tell you they should have won that game. They then were pretty uninspiring against Idaho and then won in a thriller in overtime over Western Kentucky where they kicked a field goal in the last few seconds to force OT and then they won it in overtime. That to much to the chagrin of some of us who made picks for that game. Yeah, I, it was going to look like a genius pick for me for a while. I was the only one that went in. Well, I think Tim went on Western Kentucky that week too, but – yeah, uh, they let me down. What The Hilltoppers, they let me down. in the Hilltoppers rolled somebody this week. I, I, I might have I'm been telling you, I can't Florida remember. The, whoever their um, – is it G.J. Kenny? I think, is their head coach that was – Sounds the, right. And then I just – they he, he has put together a staff that they put up points. It's a great offensive staff. So I think they're going to continue. And this is his first year there. I think they're going to continue to be an offense to look out for a little bit like – some of these other places that you see some offensive coordinators going and just lighten people up. Our, our pick segment last week, we had two games, Texas at Texas Tech, USC at Oregon State. And I said, man, both of those places, goofy things happen. And it did in Lubbock. They were able to pull out the victory. And it almost did for in Corvallis. We're going to say darn near beat USC. Who would have thought that score would have been what it was? It was Low like, what, 6-3? to three? What was it going into it, the fourth quarter? Yeah, it ended up like being 17-14, I but think, it was, was the finals. I think 7-3 to three at yeah. the end of the third quarter. Yeah, I guess Caleb Williams was not very good yeah. in, in that game for USC. But they won. They survived. They're still undefeated. So, going to be interesting. I think USC is going to have a pretty good season. I really do. Well, and it, just the Pac-12 is not very good. I mean, some of the teams that they play in the Pac-12, they should be able to handle their business. I mean, what, Arizona, Arizona State, some of those teams, Colorado, some of those teams are just not very good. No. Georgia Tech let their coach go today. Colorado might be soon to follow. Uh, moving down uh, down the trail. Hey, buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Good first hour. We'll continue the discussion with some more things coming up in hour number two, including a snippet of the latest, Kicking Back with the Cooks, which the full co- podcast just popped about an hour and a half ago. If you want to hear the whole thing, we'll give you a good chunk of it coming up in hour number two. Don't go away. Come on back. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts.
At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Preparation is the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker pride, powered locally. Bank of the West is offering the first checking account designed for climate action. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you. Shows you the estimated carbon impact of debit card purchases. And there's no minimum balance required. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field.
With the GoCurrency.com sports ticker, I am Greg Sharp. The Husker football team will get back in action this Saturday as they host Indiana for homecoming. The Big Red enjoyed their first bye week this past weekend. Interim head coach Mickey Joseph will hold his weekly press conference tomorrow. Husker Volleyball started the conference season with back-to-back wins over Michigan State and Ohio State. The Buckeye match was a doozy, with Nebraska winning in five. The latest ABCA poll came out today. Nebraska State at number three. Texas remains one. The rest of the Big Ten, Purdue is at five. Ohio State, six. Minnesota, seven. Wisconsin, eight. And Penn State checks in at number 12. The Huskers are back in action Friday at Rutgers. Monday Night Football is an NFC East matchup tonight with the New York Giants hosting the Dallas Cowboys. Georgia Tech fired their football coach and athletic director today. A.D. Todd Sansbury, football coach Jeff Collins were relieved of their duty. Collins was in his fourth year as the coach. The Yellow Jackets have lost nine straight games to FBS opponents. Light schedule in Major League Baseball. They're in the fourth inning in Pittsburgh. The Reds lead the Pirates 2 to nothing, but they're in a rain delay. Atlanta 3, Nationals nothing, top of the fifth in D.C. The Yankees have jumped ahead of the Blue Jays 2 to nothing in the top of the fourth. No home runs yet by Aaron Judge as he's trying to register number 61 on the year. Bottom of the second, Baltimore 5, Boston 2, and that's it for baseball today. This update sponsored by Currency. Does your business need help financing big-ticket items like equipment, trucks, and trailers? Currency, here to help. Visit Go Currency for details. Now get ready. Hour 2 of Sports Nightly coming up next. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Good pass, Matty Kubik outside set. Whitney Lonstein, kaboom! They can only try to slow her down. You can't stop Whitney. Boy, she is gravity's worst enemy. Give it off to Grant. He picks his way inside the 45, bounces to the outside. 40, 35, 30, foot race now. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Nebraska. Now outside Mississippi. Blocked. Kalen Hoare. Whitney Lonstein. That's a combined 13 feet of humanity. We're tied at 19 in Lincoln. Snap back to Casey. Throws downfield looking for Trey Palmer. He goes up, and did he hang on at the 37-yard line? He did. What a grab by Trey Palmer. Beautiful pass, back set. Lindsey Krause, kaboom! 19-18, Big Red. Chancellor Brewington in the game. The block, they fake the handoff. Casey rolls out, flips it out in the flat. Brewington makes a catch. He's going to go down to the goal line. Touchdown, Nebraska. Going to roll out, flip to Chancellor Brewington, and he scores. It's his second career Husker touchdown. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are back for hour number two of our Monday night show. Monday night football about ready to start. Longtime rivals, the New York football Giants and the Dallas Cowboys getting ready to play. Giants off to a 2-0 and start. A little sour on the NFL. My Chiefs absolutely imploded yesterday, blowing a game. Soured my whole day. I'm sorry. Darn it. You know, and I know Andrew felt that way after the uh, Thursday night game with his teeters crashing and burning their game with the Browns. How'd your Minnesota team do? Great comeback. Great comeback <laughs> yesterday. Scored late, beat the Lions. They're 2-1. and one. Driver's seat in their division. I, looking good so far, now that Now they're going to London. They play early next Sunday. I can't remember who they play. Do you remember? Saints. Saints and Vikings from London at 8.30. Should be another win for the Vikings. I would think. 8.30 in the morning. So you're going to get up Sunday morning. There's some football going to be on for you. That's a pretty cool little deal. All right, coming up this hour, we're going to hear the latest on the edition of Kicking Back with the Cooks. Lauren Cook interviews dad, John Cook. Huskers got that tremendous win Saturday night. Great atmosphere out at the Devaney Center, beating a top-10 team in the Ohio State Buckeyes. Uh, Pretty thrilling stuff. Uh, You heard some of the highlights in the open there. Uh, Great to see Allie Batenhorst get on the court. It's been a while since she played. She didn't play a lot, but she played a little bit. Still no Nicklin Haim. She is in street clothes for that team as they uh, now will play the next four matches on the road. So they're not going to be home for a couple weeks. Real oddity in the scheduling, Jessica. Husker football will only have two home games in October. One of those is October the 1st with Indiana, and then not till the last Saturday. And Husker volleyball only has three home matches the entire month. That's weird. Yeah, it is, and it's kind of weird, too, to think about 
because I was looking at the rest of the schedule and working on the Title IX pieces and stuff, and it's like those four games back to back to back, and then all of a sudden now we hit the road, and God. yeah, it's uh, crazy how it was loaded up on the front end. Sure is, but it's odd stuff. Basketball practice starts this week around the country, so the Huskers will be on the court. I believe the women had a workout today. As you said in hour one, a little deceiving because they've been working out really for the last six weeks. Individual stuff, maybe not as much teamwork, but it's a long season for the basketball I think folks. they have like five hours a week that they can do t together as a team. And uh, and it's, it is restricted a little bit, but yeah, they've been working out all throughout the summer and everything. They even were working out in the spring. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited. Um, you know, we had talked about the news last, uh, when was that? When was the news announced? But Sam Hybe, uh Last Friday. Last Friday. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, an opportunity for some of those young guards to step into a, a much needed role. Sam was a boy. She got to the rim. She was a difference maker and late in game. So someone's going to have to emerge into that role. And so excited to see how that develops. But Sam will be there. Sam will be a part of the team and uh, can't wait to get the first look at this team on Friday at opening night. Looking forward to that. That'll be happening. We're going to hear from both Amy Williams and Fred Hoiberg tomorrow. It's a big press conference day. Both basketball coaches are going to make appearance. John Cook will usually appears in front of football so he'll be there tomorrow and then mickey joseph with his press conference to get things back up and running so a busy day uh for a lot of publicity for husker sports we're about to hit that crossover period with sports fun time of year the month of november is absolutely crazy because you're winding down football and volleyball and then the basketball seasons both crank up so it's a really busy busy month i love november I love Thanksgiving. It's my favorite holiday, but yeah. also I love crossover season. I love when basketball season gets going and you still have football. It's I, I love it. It's kind of a little bit like March is a little bit crazy too with the crossover season, but I really like when, when basketball gets going and the excitement of a new season and learning about the new teams. I, I love November. Will Bolt squad played at an exhibition 14 innings with Omaha on Saturday. Beat them nine to one. Only gave up one run in fourteen innings. Some pretty impressive pitching. I'm told they had over a thousand people. Wow! At the game, that's awesome. On Saturday, people popped cool. in, watched for a little bit, left because fourteen innings uh, takes a long time. They have one more fall exhibition. They'll go to Lawrence to play the Jayhawks in a couple of weeks. Still a couple of home dates for Ronda Ravel's softball team, including one on October the eighth, which is a big event out at Haymarket Park, right out by Bolin Stadium in the parking lot out there to celebrate 50 years of Title IX. Yes, yeah, so the more is possible rally. It's going to be really, really cool. All of the women's athletics teams will be out there, except for volleyball. I think they're on the road, on the right? Road. So, um, but women's basketball will be out there. They'll have a, a table set up. They're going to have giveaways. And then, I mean, this softball team is really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, reigning Big Ten tournament champions, and they got a lot of players coming back. And so a chance to see them in the fall and, and show your support for them, but a chance to interact with some of the other uh, women's teams. And again, part of the Title IX celebration, the 50 years of Title IX. It's going to be a really, really neat event. And they want a big crowd out there that day to come out and, and, and see and meet some of the athletes and then stay because the softball team will have an exhibition game that day. So you can stay and watch a couple of innings of softball. Husker football plays the night before. We'll be getting back from Piscataway. So you don't have to worry about a Husker football game. And as Jessica mentioned, volleyball doesn't play. I think volleyball plays later that day. I, I believe there's maybe even, I think there's a Husker, Husker soccer match out at Hibner that day. So a day to go, go celebrate women playing in sports and doing some of that. We'll be talking more about this with Trev tomorrow night. And by the way, we will have the athletic director in here for a full hour tomorrow night. There's nothing really to talk about, but we'll see if we can fill the 60 minutes time. <laughs> You're not going to have time for all your questions, I bet. <laughs> the text line will be zipping. The phone chat calls, room will be phone calls. Yeah. A lot of different things uh, yeah. to, to go over with him. Yeah. So he's always great to talk about. He's usually very transparent about what's going on. Yeah, he and he said that, you know, it's important to him to uh, be transparent about things. And also, he usually makes a, an announcement or two um, a lot of times on his show. So, coach? No. Oh, okay. All he's right. not going to announce the football co coach. Maybe not on this Sports Nightly. Maybe the next <laughs> yeah, Sports Nightly or the next, his next show. Maybe. We'll see. I don't, I don't see. know why I did that because that's just going to get everybody fired. No, oh, yeah. that's not happening tomorrow night. That won't will be tomorrow, be. but... I, you know, sometimes he, he breaks some news on this show. He does. So you might want to tune in. Don't want yeah, to miss it. Absolutely. So uh, looking forward to that. We haven't had him on since right before the, the home opener with North Dakota. So it's been quite a while to that. So tomorrow night, hour one will be our AD show. Hour two will be the volleyball show with John Cook. So a busy night tomorrow night. We will have a football show this week. We're not sure 
which coach we're getting. It will not be Coach Joseph, but we're not sure which coach it'll be. Hopefully we'll have some updated information on that for you uh, tomorrow. Great weekend. of co- I watched a lot of college football on Saturday. Some tremendous games, some near upsets. Love the overtime game with Clemson and Wake Forest. That was really cool to watch. We talked last hour about what a slugfest the, <laughs> jokingly, USC Oregon State was. Big upset with Texas Tech beating Texas, K-State beating Oklahoma. In the Big Ten, Minnesota looked terrific. They went to East Lansing and just drilled the Spartans. Yes. They're the favorites to win the West. Uh, That seems to be the um, consensus by a lot of people. I know even, I think, College Game Day, I'm not sure which guy was saying that. They're the favorite. Yes, and then Jeremiah thinks so, and they looked pretty good on Saturday. Sure did. I mean, they they darn near shut out the Spartans on their home field. It was a tough look for Michigan State, who all of a sudden has lost two games, and they've got the road graders of those East teams still ahead of them with Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State. Maryland looks pretty good. Maryland hung in there at the big house with Michigan. That was a game into the fourth quarter. Yeah, I was shocked when I – again, because there was a lot of games at that – was the, the yeah, 11 a.m. Yeah, there was quite a few games on at that time. And so I looked at that score and was like, what? Because that yeah. was the one that I did not think was going to be that close. I didn't either. And so I had to tune in and watch that one. And so, yeah, I mean, it's going to be uh, crazy to see how the Big Ten unfolds because there's still just – it's uh, a lot of unknown, a lot of teams that you thought was were going to look pretty good have not looked good, and some teams right. that you didn't know maybe have looked better. And so we'll see how this thing unfolds. Our uh, Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. They have 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned that you can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. 402-413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. We're back with more of your calls, comments, and we'll hear a little bit of the latest kicking back with the cooks. All that straight ahead. This is University of Nebraska-Lincoln student Colton Husa with Campus News. 26 Husker students participated in the Rural Fellows Learning Program. It's a 10-week summer internship across 16 Nebraska communities. Students work with local leaders to plan and execute community improvement projects. Past projects include water system improvements in Wahoo, early childhood education access in Ord, and farmers market and music festival management in Imperial. The Mazda lineup of SUVs will provide safety, performance, and capability on your journey ahead. From the three-row Mazda CX-9 to the first-ever Mazda CX-50, our sales team is ready to guide you to the SUV for your lifestyle. Shop the Omaha Metro's exclusive Mazda dealers at Woodhouse Mazda in Bellevue or Woodhouse Place Mazda. Visit us online for your next Mazda SUV at woodhousemazda.com. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. Grant gets a handoff, Stutter steps his way to the 15, cuts to the outside, wow, 10, 5, touchdown, Anthony Grant, an electrifying move at the 19-yard line, and he scoops in there for six points. Tomorrow, from 6 to 7 p.m., we will be hosting the Athletic Director Show with Trev Alberts. In hour number two, from 7 to 8, we'll be hosting the Volleyball Show with John Cook. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or on the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash Huskers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. In America, the future belongs to everyone. 
So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Here's to the locals, raised right here in the Western Corn Belt. The strong ones. We help them grow stronger making world-class genetics, research, and technology local. The cutting-edge yet common-sense agronomy, the shake em up yields. Because we're born and raised here, too. And we'll keep raising the bar to ensure you only get the best at Hogemeyer. Raise local, raised right here. Learn more at therightseed.com. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So now you know who you're talking to, Toyota the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY 2000 through 2021 sales. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie, back with you here on a Monday night. John Cook, we didn't talk really about this. Is bet my bad on the Friday. We had that short show before pregame began, and I, I had it on my notes and I missed it. But with the win Friday, it was his 800th career win. Not all at Nebraska, but his 800th career win. Pretty big milestone. And Trev Alberts was there after the victory over the Spartans and uh, gave him a little presentation out there. Yeah, got a belt buckle. I was told that Coach Cook loved it, that it was a big hit, that he's, uh, I think he's pretty surprised by it, but how fitting that, you know, now with all of the uh, talk about Bud and him being a cowboy these days and also love the graphic that Nick's crew put together of Coach Cook celebrating his 800th win in a night outfit on Bud, you know, with the theme of Red Kingdom. So, yeah, awesome celebration for him. And for him, I guarantee you, he might not have even known it was his 800th win, and he probably was like, okay, move on, next next game. <laughs> well, and he even said that after the Ohio State when he said, I can tell you, 801 feels better than 800. So, uh -huh, yeah. So, yeah, but great, great accomplishment. And, you know, I know Husker fans don't take Coach Cook for granted. He's one of the great coaches – of any sport anywhere. I mean, the consistency, I think it's like nine or ten straight Elite Eights and four national titles. Pretty pretty impressive. I mean, and I've I've talked about this before, but just for a coach that was so dominant early in the two thousands to remain relevant now is speaks a lot to the kind of yeah. coach that he is. Because there's a lot of coaches that didn't that don't evolve, that fall off their programs, don't remain as relevant or as dominant. And so for him to and and he's talked a lot about that, about evolving and changing with today's players and the game and all of that. And he just 
He's so um, smart about how he approaches, even when he was talking about getting the student section involved. You know, the, the other right. things that he does, the, the Red Kingdom, all these things that he tries to stay involved with to help continue his program, stay where it is. You know, he didn't have to do these kinds of things back in 2000, but the fact that he continues to evolve, not a lot of coaches will do that. You know, they, they might stay stuck in their ways of what worked in 2000 and, you know, the early 2000s should work now, but that's not the case. And so the way that he evolved with the times, I think also to me speaks more about what he's been able to do as a coach than anything. The other thing I look at with him is his coaching tree. He has tutored and mentored yes. other coaches who now have gone on Danny being the prime example, what she's doing at Louisville, and Caleb Anworth at Ole Miss, Christy Johnson at Iowa State. That speaks well. He helps other coaches go take over other programs, and he's there to keep helping them even though they're not here anymore. And I think, too, a lot of programs, if they lose a, an assistant coach who did a lot of recruiting, a lot of times that could hurt a program. But Absolutely. for him, he relo he reloads his coaching staff he does. every other year, too, it seems like, and, and keeps that trend going because with recruiting now a lot of these players do commit to the coaches that they're being recruited by and so you know I think um, he does such a good job of you know reloading whoever is seeing the next great coaching talent I, you know we we talked a little bit about that but I think he probably takes great pride in that and seeing the talent in a, not just a you know seeing talent in players but also seeing talent in coaches, coaches. yeah right. and I should mention Totter in there too yes. Totter yep. now at it at Long Beach State all right uh, the latest podcast kicking back with the cooks it comes out every month it popped a couple of hours ago so we wanted to play you a bit of it right now you saw it uh right before it was let's see right before the creighton match i the week before i sent a tweet out and i said i don't know if you saw this tweet i'm hoping you didn't but i said i need help customizing a shirt or sweatshirt that's you know says nebraska volleyball and some things on the back so I had a few people reach out to me, a handful of people, and I ended up go going with this woman, uh, a mother running her own business. And what I wanted was a shirt and a sweatshirt, so something to wear when it's hot out, something to wear when it's cool out to games. And it says Nebraska Volleyball on the front, and then on the back it says Papa, and then the number zero, because no one's number zero on the Nebraska team. So Madden now rocks that for every Husker volleyball game day. And we, I sh debuted it to you against Creighton. And you, I was standing out in the hallway talking to Lindsay and she's like, oh, thank God you're here. She goes, he's really stressed. <laughs> <laughs> please, please go back there and take Madden back there. And so we, I took Madden back and she gave you a big hug and said hi to you before the match. So hopefully that calmed you down. But I just think it's so cool how many small businesses there are out there that we just don't know about that put together amazing items and are so creative and she I mean she gave me a bunch of different designs to choose from and uh, it was just she her turnaround time she got it done in a week she actually got it done earlier than expected so uh, just appreciate artists and their work and people in the creative world yeah and Lauren uh, I, I just got a book um about your guy that you did the wedding from Grant up in Jackson oh. Hole, uh, a, a lady in Nebraska who's in, very involved in the horse world and rodeo. And um, she just sent me this book and she said, I read this book and I think it would be great for you to read it. And uh, Grant Gallagher, is that his name? Uh, Grant Gallagher. Gall Gallagher, Gallagher, yeah. He's a horse. From Diamond Cross Ranch. Yeah, Diamond Cross Ranch, which you actually helped do some weddings up there this summer. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. He's a horse whisperer. But he, what he also does, is, what's fascinating is CEOs, top people, business people in the world come and, and learn about how to be better leaders through horses through him. I mean, this guy's like world famous. And, and you've, you've, did you meet him when you did the wedding or he was around? I did. He was hanging out. Yeah. I mean, so she said, I he hope. He lives out of a trailer. Yeah. I, she said, I hope you can go up there and ride with him or watch him train. And I said, listen, that's my goal next summer. I want to go meet him and hang out with him. And the book's a great book. But again, that's one of the great things about coaching and living in Nebraska is, is your story about the t shirt, the story about the book, the story about the painting. I mean, people here care. And it, it just, it just is, is very, very special. What is the book called for any listeners who maybe want to check it um, out? Uh, okay, help me out. Think, is it's, it Think Like a Horse? Think Like a Horse, yeah. Think Like a Horse. Okay.
Oh. Pike a horse, Grant yeah. Gallagher, Grant down Gallagher. across ranch, yep. Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Yeah. And again, he, you, he's just okay. not a horse guy. I mean, they list all the people that have come in there. I mean, you're talking like CEO of the IBM. You know, Microsoft. Microsoft. I mean, Google. And, they, and he does retreats with their top executives. So and he's just a cowboy. And you, like you said, he lives in a trailer. Mm-hmm. But he has, he has a gorgeous ranch. It, it's beautiful. Everyone wants to get married there. I, I think they have weddings there almost every day of the week. Yeah. So I, I told some of the, um, uh, some of my cowboy friends who were, a couple of them are engaged, and I, and I sent them the picture of, you know, when you say your vows, and then they have a herd of horses run by on that video. And I said, this, you're is, kissing. this is where you need to get married. So that's pretty yeah. cool how they do that. It's, it's the, when the first kiss happens. Yeah. They let the horses go, and it's and then you have the backdrop of the Tetons, and yeah. the horses are running, and it's just it, you can't put it into words. Yeah, stunning. Well, I do appreciate all of this horse talk and <laughs> the, uh, creative talk, but I I do want to ask you a couple of volleyball questions. Let's go. How do you decide? to run a 6-2 or a 5-1. Just give us, I know you've talked a little bit about it, but just give us a brief why you decided to go to a 6-2 as opposed to a 5-1 or, or why you run a 5-1 over a 6-2. So to run a 6-2, you have to have four outside hitters and two setters. So you, you can't even look at that unless you have that. We, we have that on our depth chart. Uh, and uh, we, you know, with Ali going out, we move Maggie to right side. So we essentially are playing with three middles, which works. So she, you know, and she's a big block. So uh, bottom line, you can't. You, if you want to run a six-two, you can do that. The the great thing about a six-two is you always have three hitters. It's hard to defend. The tough thing is you got to have passing, and your passing formations can get a little more complicated. Uh, and uh, and you got to have two setters that are pretty consistent. So Nicklin and Ani were very similar, very consistent setters. They set the same ball. They're about the same size. Well, then Nicklin goes out. We put in Kennedy. It's the, Kennedy and Ani are a little bit different, so it, it's, it hasn't been quite as smooth, but we're getting smoother, and we actually put up really good numbers against Kentucky. To run a 5-1, you've got to have one setter that can run the show. Uh, it gives you, allows you more subs. You can get people in. You can get specialists in. You can get defensive specialists in. The disadvantage of, of a 5-1 is three rotations. You only have two hitters in the front row. So do you have a good enough hitter coming out of the back row? We also have that option. Whitney, Whitney's a great back row hitter. Maddie's a great back row hitter. I think Lindsey Krause could be a phenomenal back row hitter at some point. So it's easier to get better pastors in and sub pastors in you can get a serve sub in but you have to have a setter that can run the show and can make all those hitters good and it becomes a little more simple and a little more uh, consistent because you're running certain sets to certain players over and over and over and they just kind of know more what to expect in a 6-2 it's a little more random and not quite as consistent and you got to train a lot of different things so uh, those are some of the advantages, disadvantages of running both. Since you've been running a 6-2, what is your biggest weakness or negative in the 6-2? And, and I know you mentioned passing. You mentioned the inconsistency sometimes of having two different setters in there. But what's throughout preseason and, and the times that you have ran a 6-2, which has been the majority of the preseason, what has been your biggest weakness running that system? Uh, the biggest weakness is just you got players coming in and out and some chaos plays and uh, you know you, you, the other weakness is you know against Creighton, Ani and Nicklin had 34 digs between them. Okay, so that means they're not setting. If they're digging the ball, they're not setting. So Lexi Rodriguez has to be a great setter, and we're actually have. Uh, put up great numbers against Creighton with her setting. Stanford, we hit negative, and then we hit 600 against Kentucky with her setting. So, you're you're gonna you essentially can take out the setter almost every play, and so that that is where we we the the weakness is. And then the other weakness is we got if we have some servers struggling, there's not much we can do. Can't sub them out. We don't have the subs. 
in your opinion right now, what lineup has been your strongest lineup? Um, I don't know. We just, played, just we played so many different lineups. Uh, right. And we really haven't given the 5-1 a chance, but I don't know. You know, Kennedy hasn't shown us that she's ready to run a 5-1 yet. So, and and Nicklin, you know, has been banged up. So, you know, that was our plan going in, and we had to adjust. So, <laughs> I'll ask you again. In your opinion, Give me your strongest lineup. I, it depends on the day and, and who's playing well. And, <laughs> but uh, what, Let me ask you this. Statistically, maybe what's your strongest lineup? That, that's another tough question because we've been, I, all as I know this, Lauren, right now in the 6-2, we are ahead of where we were statistically last year in every area blocking. Uh, attack efficiency by our opponents. Our hitting efficiency is 100 points higher than it was last year. Our transitions if attack is up. Uh, I, I think I mentioned blocking is up. Um, the uh, biggest area that we're down is serving. And that's because we, you know, Nicklin hasn't been serving every match. Um, we have some higher, younger players serving. Uh, and we got a middle serving, so there's not much you can do if they're having an off night in, in running the 6-2. So, so statistically, the 6 has done a lot of really good things, and it, uh, uh, but it kind of hamstrings you a little bit in making subs and adjustments. How about set attempts to the middles? Are you up in that department? Um, I haven't checked that, but... Um, Please look into it for me and okay. get back to me. Yeah. Well, you, but you got to remember, in a, in a three rotations, you only have two hitters. So you're going to set that middle more. And remember, that middle's going behind off one leg you know, on the slide attack. So get, there's more opportunities to set them. Uh, and you kind of have to force it to them a little bit. So, so but I, I, we'd like to set more middle. Um, but here's you the other thing. need to set more middle. Here's the other thing. Matty Kubik's not getting 50 swings every match. True. Which was happening last year. So Matty Kubik's not even, doesn't even get the most swings some nights on our team. And we're running, you know, when you've got, uh, uh, you know, half our kills coming from behind the setter right now in the 6-2. I mean, that's hard to defend. Last question. Let's fast forward to end of Big Ten conference play. What system do you think you'll end up in? I don't know. It, it's going to depend on players and development and who steps up. If you had to take a guess. <laughs> I don't guess. They crack me up, and it's funny, too. She keeps prodding. She just, if he doesn't answer her question how she fe sees fit, she just asks it again and pushes him. And uh, Good now, stuff. And I told him that, too. I said, she can ask you questions nobody else can. He's like, yeah. And she, but just the way that she sees the, the sport and sees things on the court, that's what he says when she talks to him. She points out things to him that he didn't even notice. Right, yeah. Good stuff. The full podcast is up, right? Yes, out on all of our podcast platforms, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen. Very good. All right, go find it, folks. It's uh, always worth a listen. Hey, if the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, you could win a $54,000 credit on a new vehicle from any of the Woodhouse Auto Family dealerships this season. A contestant chosen weekly. Go to Huskers.com slash Woodhouse for official rules and how to get yourself entered. Phone lines back open for you. Text lines as well, 402-413-2400. Back with more of the show next. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series. Drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Can you name one thing that's more exciting than football in Nebraska? <laughs> okay, maybe not. But there's something that comes close. 
Choose scratch tickets from the Nebraska Lottery. That's right. Choose from a variety of play styles with huge top prizes. There's something fun for everyone. So, when football isn't on, pick up some scratch tickets from the Nebraska Lottery. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson, but when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name, too, making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. At Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker Athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the field, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant decal brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with decal. Always read and follow green marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. For 46 years, our focus has been our customers at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont. Come see for yourself how easy buying your new car, truck, or SUV at Sid Dillon can be. Stop by our dealership in Fremont to order your new vehicle and shop in stock and inbound inventory. And if you need a commercial vehicle, we're your GMC Business Elite dealer. Shop at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. GMC, we are professional grade. I'm so glad we called SOS. Our AC is the coldest. I'm always the coldest. SOS to the rescue. Hey, this is Dakota Scrawford, wide receiver from Louisiana, now playing in Lincoln. When your AC isn't the coldest, you call SOS heating and cooling. Their takes don't make commissions, so they give you an honest opinion, fair pricing, and longer warranties than a competition guaranteed. Take it from the coldest. We'll keep you cool this summer. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY 2000 through 2021 sales. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. 
We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest Premier John Deere dealers, applying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. 402-413-2400, the number to dot us up with a comment or question. Let's head to the phones to West Point. Husker Dan, good evening, sir. Welcome to the program. Hey, kids, how are you? Greg and Jessica, I haven't called in for a while, so here I am. Yes, we've missed you, Husker Dan. <laughs> hey Jessica, you probably were, you probably got a little uh, with the Oklahoma win. I'm sure you're like kind of. Hmm? I mean, yeah. Then was, they lost. I was uh, wanting uh, well, Nebraska I know, but... to hand the Sooners a loss, and then Adrian Martinez did it for us last uh, Saturday night. Yeah, I know. I, you know, and I can't take anything away from Adrian. I, you know, as much as Husker fans have bashed him over the years, it's, you know, with him leaving and stuff it's like you know good for him i i'm happy for that kid and he's a good kid and i just good for him hey i want to say congratulations to john cook for his 800th win yeah oh my goodness that's awesome fantastic you bet and my second thing is the boys of summer our baseball team went down to omaha and it beat omaha and I watched the highlights, and oh my goodness, they were playing like professionals out there. A lot of double plays, and wow. Yeah, you you throw 14 innings of baseball and only allow a run, and that's some pretty good pitching. I think Coach Bolt, as you know, Dan, he's done a, a major switch, switch with the roster. A lot of new faces. You're going to need a program when you go to Haymarket Park next spring oh, for that boy. first game. Yeah. There are a lot of new faces on that team. I'm so excited. I, you know, he's got this thing going the right way. It's like, it's just unfortunate last year that we just, you know, it was a good season, but it was a, it was, it was like a, like a rebuilding type of deal. I don't know. Well, just having that many arms go down Injuries. and, uh, yeah, you know, I don't, injured, I don't actually or, don't think Will Bolt would say it was a decent no, no, season. No, no, I don't think Will would agree with you, Dan. It was not a good season. Well, yeah, you know, Greg, you're probably right, but you know, with all the the injuries, like Jessica said, that that hurt us big time. Sure did. Okay, my last thing. Now this is for you, Greg. And I I don't know if you've talked about this or I, you know, I missed some shows and stuff. But with the coaching and what is your opinion? Where are we at? Where do we need to go? Well, and Dan, appreciate the phone call. I you know I think the, what you focus should focus on right now is supporting Coach Joseph. And these players, there's eight games. There's a long way of this season still to go. And it starts Saturday with Indiana. And then you put your trust in Trev, that he's going to make the right decision with the future of the program over the coming months. Uh, so I think that's where you sit right now. You go out and support him Saturday night. You go out and support him on the road games and root him on. There's a lot of chances to win some football games in the next two months. Yeah, and I'm sure Trev will have to talk a lot about this tomorrow night on his show so he can um, speak for himself tomorrow. But... I think he's going to be, It's as he said in the first press conference, he's going to take his time with this. We've heard him talk about some of the conversations he had with Fred Hoiberg, right, about what does this program need to do moving forward. I think he wants to hear out all the candidates that he has on his list, which he said he has a list. It's a lengthy list, but he wants to sit down and talk with them and, and hear about what plans are in place and not just, you know, make a splashy hire because, oh, this coach has done a good job right now. I think he wants to hear what plans do you have for Nebraska? Not what have you done successfully at other places? What can you do for this program moving forward? And that's a process. That takes time for him to be able to really explore and sit down and, and figure out which coach is going to be the best moving forward and, and take this program in the right direction. Let's come back into Lincoln for our next caller. Randy, you're up on Sports Alley. Good evening. Good evening, Greg, Jessica. Uh, a question just about recruiting. I know uh, we've lost a four-star rush defensive end, I believe, and I'm just wondering your guys' thoughts on if we're going to lose some more or all the negative stuff that comes out of changing coaches, especially the head coach, and where, where do you think we're heading in that area? All right, Randy, appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to lose more. We absolutely will. That's what happens when you make a change. But your new coach should be able to bring in some guys that maybe he's been recruiting or is on 
with his current school. And with the transfer portal, it's not nearly as damaging as it used to be. You have a chance to go because there's going to be hundreds of guys enter the transfer portal. So you can remake your roster in an off season, unlike any time ever before in college football. Yeah, and we're not only going to lose recruits, we're going to lose guys on this current football team, too. I mean, it's just the nature of the business nowadays. I mean, you're just going to have guys that enter the transfer portal Correct. while – on the flip side of that, we'll also get guys that we can get out of the transfer portal and players that, you know, I mean, it's not something that is, um, it's not legal to, you know, uh, interfere or, or talk to guys, but you, how many times have we seen players on current teams follow their coaches to another place? Look at Caleb Williams followed his quarterback Absolutely. coach to USC. So, you know, I think you'll have some of that as well. And, you know, some of the recruits that fit better with whatever that head coach's system is going to be. So, yeah, I mean, going to lose recruits and guys that are on this current team, but also going to, on the flip side of that, bring others in. So, Randy, don't sweat it. It's going to happen. Don't get all nervous when you're hearing that we've had four or five guys decommit. It's only one right now. You're right. It's going to happen. It's just what, and when you make a change, you're going to lose young men. But again, your new staff will be able to find some new guys. Prime example, Huskers were not in on A.J. Allen at all last year until Brian Applewhite got yep. hired here. And then all of a sudden, he had a connection with A.J. Allen and brought him with him. So that's what's going to happen. So just don't sweat all that stuff over the next 60, 90 days. There is going to be a ton of movement with the roster. And not only the recruit in A.J. Allen, but also the transfer in O'Shawn Mathis. I mean, everybody in the country wanted O'Shawn Mathis, yep. and he came here because of the relationship he had with Brian Applewhite. So a lot of these coaches, and even you think about whatever the – whoever the head coach may be, probably going to be bringing in his own assistants that probably are from all over the country that will probably have players follow them. So right. it's, um, yeah, there's a lot to unfold. And as much as we might lose recruits and guys on this current team, we're going to be bringing new guys in. It's going to look a lot different, folks, in six months than what it looks like right now. Nebraska 811 says, go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility line's marked. It's free, it's easy, and it's the law. We're back with our weekend winners coming up next. Husker fans, join us in celebrating excellence in women's athletics. Meet student-athletes and alumni from every Nebraska women's program and commemorate the 50th anniversary of Title IX at the More Is Possible Rally on Saturday, October 8th at Bolin Stadium. This event will begin at 10.30 a.m. and is free for all ages. Register today at huskers.com slash title IX. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. To win the game, you gotta have more strength. You gotta be tougher. You gotta be reliable. You gotta want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Husker fans, 
Join us in celebrating excellence in women's athletics. Meet student athletes and alumni from every Nebraska women's program and commemorate the 50th anniversary of Title IX at the Morris Possible Rally on Saturday, October 8th at Bolin Stadium. This event will begin at 10.30 a.m. and is free for all ages. Register today at huskers.com slash title IX. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest. Premier John Deere Dieter supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Time to see what's on tap, presented by Bud Light Husker Soccer. It will be on the road for a couple of matches this coming weekend. They go to Indiana and Purdue Thursday night and Sunday is when they will play in the Hoosier State for a pair of Big Ten matchups. They're coming off of a 1-0 victory over Michigan on the road yesterday up at Ann Arbor, their second league win. Husker Volleyball will travel back east as well. They'll play the Rutgers Scarlet Knights Friday night. First serve at 6, pregame at 5.30 with J.B. and Lauren. And Husker football against the Indiana Hoosiers, 6.30 Saturday night here at Memorial Stadium. It's a homecoming night. Our pregame coverage will begin with Husker game day at 2.30. That is what is on tap presented by Bud Light. All right, time to spin it around the room for this weekend winners. You're Get not going to believe who my winner is. You're Lay not going to believe it. Who is my least favorite or who has been my least favorite, most hated dude in the NBA? Oh, the guy from the Clippers. Um, Andrew, you know. Andrew. Uh, is it Patrick Beverly? Yes. Yeah. He's now with the Lakers, Andrews oh, he's Lakers. With the La Lakers. And so you know he's had this long time beef with Russell Westbrook, dating yeah. back to when Russell was on with the Thunder and he I hated him when he was playing the Thunder. Well now he's teammates with Russell Westbrook. And today at Media Day, Lakers Media Day, he told a story about how when Russell was in Houston, he got his sister courtside tickets. They buried the beef and now he said, if I was to name a best friend on the team, it would easily be Russell Westbrook. Oh, Jeez. Really? Yes. So wow. they're, they have worked out their beef. They're close. They work out together. They've been shooting together. And so my hatred for Pat Bev has gone down a little bit. Wow. All right. Andrew. <laughs> I don't know if this is allowed, but I'm going to try to see if we can do it. I'm, it hasn't happened yet. So I'm going to go the men's and women's basketball team playing at PBA this weekend, ESTG. Good vibes for basketball coming back. Dude, that's my big one. That's a four. That's a future event. I'm ready. I'm so ready for basketball. I, you, I, that should be your weekend winner in a week from tonight. I was just. That's the first uh, thing I was like. I love that, and that's what I'm gonna go. If I can't, okay. You could. You could have picked Albert Pujols hitting a 700th home run, fourth man ever in Major League Baseball. Your guy Adrian Martinez. You could have picked Adrian Martinez. You could have picked. Uh, USA Golf wins the President's Cup. I'm so ready for basketball. I'm so happy, and I'm so ready for basketball. If, if we could, I'll go Nebraska playing uh, Michigan and us getting a big win in Ann Arbor. There you go. Husker soccer. There you go. go. Sarah hey. Weber nets one of the first half. That holds up. Another clean sheet for our Sammy Hawk. She's had three shutouts in the last couple of weeks. Good move. Husker <laughs> soccer gets three more points. Now, there you go. You picked me a event that's starting in five days. What are you doing? I am ready for You're football. You're killing. I'm ready for, I'm ready for basketball. I am so ready for he basketball. He did not understand the assignment. No, I, 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 oh, no, I understood it. I am ready for basketball. Give me Albert Pujols. Back-to-back <laughs> -back Jacks Friday night in, in uh, Chavez Ravine. Fourth man ever in Major League Baseball. It's seven home runs, 700 home runs. Pretty cool stuff right there. Hey, buckle up, put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Athletic Director Show with Trev Alberts tomorrow night in Hour 1. Join us in. Have a great night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Here's to the locals. Raised right here in the Western Corn Belt. The strong ones. We help them grow stronger. Making world-class genetics, research, and technology local. The cutting-edge yet common-sense agronomy. The shake-em-up yields. 
because we're born and raised here too. And we'll keep raising the bar to ensure you only get the best at Hogemeyer. Raise local, raised right here. Learn more at therightseed.com. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With the proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today, 